Greetings, fellow colonizers. If you happen to be a colorless cave beast like me, also known as white people, then take out your list of things you're not allowed to do and get ready to add another. According to the regressive demagogues at MSNBC, if you're white, then you have no say in who isn't isn't a racist. You get no vote. MSNBC host Joy Reid has a long history of promoting hate and racism towards colorless Americans, and this show was no different. One of her guests, Eli Mistel, let it be known that he doesn't believe white Americans should have a voice when it comes to racism, and his logic for this was his people were held in bondage for 400 years. Mark Meadows, I know why members of Congress can't say this because they have to work with the man, yeah. but I don't have to work with the man. Mark Meadows is so racist that he needs to be put on display at the African American History Museum as an artifact, all right? I am so sick of Republicans thinking that the only racist people left in America are David Duke and Louis Farrakhan, all right? White people don't get a vote. My people have been held in bondage and, and oppression in the new world for 400 years. My okay, so first off, what happened 400 years ago has no bearing on white people's right to express themselves now. African slaves were captured and sold by other Africans, and they were sold to people all over the world of all colors. The slave trade was not exclusively black and white, and that goes both figuratively and literally. I'm so tired of idiots like this guy cherry-picking history and using it to justify his hatred and racism now. Take, for example, the Barbary slave trade. Right, I know, white people always bring up the Barbary slave trade in discussions about slavery. But why wouldn't they? 1.25 million Europeans were caught up in it and sold in North Africa. What does this have to do with now? Nothing! And just forget about the context of worldwide slavery over the course of history. How insane is it to punish white people in America for today for something that only a very small percentage of white people in this country had anything to do with? It was only something like 5% of white Americans who actually ever owned slaves. And just forget about all the white people that came to this country long after slavery ended. And what about the hundreds of thousands of white men that gave their lives to end slavery? My only point is that this guy is trying to limit what white people can and can't express in this country based on something that happened hundreds of years ago that people today in this country had nothing to do with. How ironic is it that he's telling a group of people what they can and can't say based on nothing but their skin color? My own counsel will I keep on who is to be called racist. All right. So, so when, when, these, when these people... These people? White Republicans try to tell me, and Bagger Vance standing behind her, when these people try to tell me who is racist and who is not racist, they need to understand that I do not care. What this gay Don King doesn't seem to get is that nobody really cares what his opinion is on who is and isn't a racist. People like him have been using that word as a weapon to silence and censor people for a really long time. Look, sometimes it's justified. There are real racists out there, but a vast majority of the time it's completely misplaced and they're just using it as a weapon to destroy their political opposition. Hilariously, he then goes on to say that he doesn't care who gets labeled a racist. All he cares about is people's actions and their policies. So Eli, please explain which policies or actions from Donald Trump or Mark Meadows have been used to hurt or target black people. As far as I can tell, not a single one. Making jokes about Obama being from Kenya won't cut it. Unless, of course, you plan on calling Michelle Obama a racist as well for saying that her husband's home country is Kenya. Uh, Barack has led by example. Uh, when we took our trip to Africa and visited his home country in Kenya, Gee, I wonder if Michelle Obama saying that the president's home country is Kenya had anything to do with the conspiracy theories. At, at minimum, Mark Meadows is willing to utilize birtherism for his own political advancement and is willing to use the physical body of a black woman as a rebuttal against the idea that Donald Trump is racist. This is like a problem a lot of people have with the Republican approach on race in general. What do you think? Yeah, well, no question. By the way, note to self, don't follow, follow uh, Ellie Mistel on, you know, on, 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 on something <laughs> like this. Whoa, he's one of the good whites. You can tell by how he accepts blatant racism against them with a smile. I want you to notice how Joy Reid uses this hyperbolic language of using her black body as rebuttal to the idea Trump is racist. What actually happened is an aide that happens to be black and works with President Trump wanted to stand up for him because she's never seen him do or say anything racist. Which is actually no different than Joy Reid using the exact same black body to prove that Trump is racist. The use of that language is meant to stir up hate and anxiety in people who have been brainwashed to believe that whites and Republicans are constantly out to get them.
It seems that the left will never relent in dividing this country along racial lines and coming up with sets of rules that are only to be applied to people with a certain skin color. How ironic. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you like my content and you agree with my message, please consider donating to me on PayPal. You can also support me on Patreon or Subscribestar. You can find the links in the description or in the pinned comment. Thank you.